Okay, so we'll begin. In the Hamdilah, Nahmedu Hunestainu Hunestafiru, when I would be lahim on Shuri and Susina, woman on Say Ati Amanina, May Yahdi in Lahu Fala Mudil Lele, woman you did Fala Hadila, Wash Hadwilla in the Hay in the law, Wahdehula Sherikala, Wash Hadu and Mohammed and Abduhu or a Sulu, Ama Bad. Hamdilah. So, mashallah, we have reached the final class. We are on the 28th of Ramadan, 1443, on a Saturday. So, it is our niya today, inshallah, to finish the remainder of uh, Aqad, Doctrine 112, all the way to 117, which is going to take us from pages 64 to 82, inshallah. Our reader today is Brother Qasim, so we're going from here. To the end, inshallah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us goodness, and let us begin. So I will start from where we last left off at, from the words of Imam Barbahari. Rahimahullah, bismillah, rahman, rahim. Wa huwa ma wusifat laka fi hadha al-kitabi fa rahimahullahu abdan wa rahima walidayhi qara'a hadha al-kitab wa abathahu wa amila bihi wa da'a ilayhi wa ahtajja bihi fa innahu deen Allahi wa deen rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it is what is described to you in this book. May Allah have mercy upon you, upon any slave and his parents that read this book, studied it, acted by it, called to it, and sought evidence in it. Indeed, within it is the religion of Allah and his messenger. وقد رده كله كما لو أن عبدا آمن بجميع ما قال الله تبارك وتعالى إلا أنه شك في حرف فقد رد جميع ما قال الله تعالى وهو كافر كما أن شهادة لا يده الله لا تقبل من صاحبها إلا بصدق النية وإخلاص اليقين. So whoever declared something as permitted in contradiction to what is in this book, then he is not judging by Allah according to any religion. Such an individual has rejected the whole of the religion. This is just like some slave having believed in all what Allah blessed and exalted said except that he has suspicion in one letter. This is rejection of what Allah exalted be he said and such a one is an unbeliever. And in the same vein the testimony that there is no God but Allah is not accepted from someone who says it unless it is, is with truthful intention and purity of intention. كذلك لا يقبل الله شيئا من السنة في ترك بعض في ترك بعض ومن ترك من السنة شيئا فقد ترك السنة كلها فعليك بالقبول ووضع عنك المحد واللجاجة فإنه ليس من دين الله في شيء وزمانك خاصة زمان سوء سوء فاتق الله. And likewise, Allah does not accept from anyone the sunnah in leaving part of it, and whoever abandoned some part of the sunnah has indeed abandoned all of it. You must accept all of it and leave whatever is opposition and crookedness as it is not from the religion of Allah at all. So your time is very precious. So do, don't let it go for waste. Fear Allah. All right. So the sunnah again we're talking about in this context is the i'tiqad. What we're supposed to believe. We're not talking about sunnah in terms of hadith or in terms of fiqh. We're talking about the technical term that Imam Barbahari is discussing here. وإذا وقعت الفتنة فزم جوف بيتك وفر من جوار فتنتي وإياك ووضع والعصبية وكل وكل من كان من قتال بين المسلمين على الدنيا فهو فتنة فتق الله وحده لا شريك له ولا تخرج فيها. When the tribulation surfaces, stay in your homes, flee from the tyranny of tribulation, and beware of and beware of partisanship and sectarianism. Okay, so we want to know. All right, so partisanship, sectarianism, stay in your homes during this time. When is that? How do we know what that is? Continue. And all of what results in the fighting between the Muslims for the earthly life is defined as tribulation. Okay, so whatever results, whenever Muslims are fighting for the earthly life, that's fitna, that's tribulation. And when that happens, stay in your homes. When that happens, don't go to it. Fear Allah. He is alone and unique in his oneness. Do not go out looking for tribulation. ولا تقاتل فيها ولا تهوى ولا تشايع ولا تماي ولا تحب ولا تحب شيئا من أمورهم فإنه يقال من أحب فعال قوم خيرا كان أو شر كان كمن عمله وفقنا الله وإياكم لمرضاته وجنبنا وإياكم وعصيته 
Do not fight in times of tribulation, times of evil desires, inclining sectarianism, growing inclination towards trends, and do not show love towards any of their affairs. All right, so stay away from inclined desires and evil desires inclining. Sectarianism, right? Trends. We, have, we as Muslims have to be careful about trends because there's certain trends that'll happen. Stay away from trends. Stay away from things that, well, this is popular now and this is cool now. You have to be careful about trends because trends are the things that can take you off the map. There was a time in which people were arguing about hadith, but they had no fiqh. And that was the trend. People were arguing about hadith, but had no fiqh. Then there was a trend after that where everyone was arguing about rally for khilafah, but they had no fiqh and they had no hadith. Right? Then there's a trend. Now the trend is everyone's got method, but no one has fiqh. How is everyone following a method, but no one's got fiqh? Everyone's like, well, we're so-and-so, we're Maliki to the fullest, or we're this to the fullest, but they have no fiqh. They don't know what's in it other than the fact that, well, Malikis do this, or this group does this, but they have no fiqh. How are you this to the fullest and you have no fiqh? To the fullest means when the picture is overflowing and it's to the fullest. If you are to the fullest, but you have no fiqh, then how are you following this? It's because it's a trend now. These are trends. You have to beware because a trend is not substantive. There's no substance in a trend. Beware of that. Beware of this as it can be said that whoever loves the actions of a people, good or bad, can be said to be like the one who does the action. May Allah make us and you to stay upon what is pleasing to him and make us and you avoid disobedience to him. وأقل من النظر في النجوم إلا ما است وإل إلا ما تستعين به على مواقيت الصلاة وإله عمس وذلك فإنه يدعو إلى الزندقة. One should look the absolute minimum into astronomy except as what can be an aid for knowing the times for salah and so forth. Whatever is besides that is most assuredly calling to زنقادة. زندقة. زندقة. All right. So understand this. So. We look into astronomy because if you go too far within astronomy, you come out of the other end, which is quackery, known as astrology. So now you start asking people, what's your birth sign? What was your rising sign? Oh, well, Tauruses are like this. Sagittarians are always like this. Well, you know people born at 10.32 p.m. in the Eastern Standard Time, they're always like this. Can't ever trust a Leo. No, stay away from this foolishness. Do the absolute bare minimum in terms of carrying out your obligations, what you're supposed to do, for knowing the times of Salah, Qibla, other things like this. Whatever comes out on the side of that will usually be quackery. Beware of looking into speculative theology and sitting with, with the people who engage in speculative theology. You must follow the narrations, the people of narrations, attend to them, ask about them, be with them, sit with them, and take learning from them. Because the religion is handed down to us. Quran, Sunnah, these things are coming down to us for, through narratives. So it's important that we understand what this is. Grasp what it is. Understand the people who guard these things. Understand the transmission of these things. Because that's where you're really going to, going to get the knowledge. وَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ مَا عَمَنَ اللَّهُ مِثْلَ مِثْلَ الْخَوْفِ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَطَرِيقَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْحُزْنِ وَالشَّفَقَاتِ وَالْحَيَاءِ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى You should know that whatever someone worships Allah with like fear is from Allah. The means to fear, sorrow, tenderness, humility and shyness are all from Allah. Blessed and exalted be He. وَحْذَرْ أَنْ تَجْلِسَ مَا عَمَنْ يَدْعُوا إِلَى الشَّوْقِ وَالْمَحَبَّةِ وَمَن Beware that you sit with whoever calls to doctrines of longing and love, being in seclusion with women and that way. Indeed, these people are all upon their strainers. Okay, so the people that call to doctrines of longing and love because there'll be no text with it. There'll be no proof with it. So the people say, well, Islam is all just love. It's all about longing. It's all about love. It's all about loving one another. It's all about this. Then they're alone with women all the time. Then they say, if you have any problems having children, leave your wife with me and I will heal her and cure her. And then the, children, the child is born and it looks like the shaykh. And you say, subhanAllah. And all these type of things. This is foolishness. Stay away from these ways because these are the people of deep innovation and bid'ah of all different categories and classes. وَعَلَمْ رَحِمُكَ اللَّهُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى دَعَى الْخَلْقَ كُلَّهُمْ إِلَى عِبَادَتِهِ وَمَنْ وَمَنْ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِالْإِسْلَامِ تَفَضُّلًا May Allah have mercy upon you. You should know that Allah, blessed and exalted, has called the entire creation 
to his worship and whoever after that is upon what he has willed with Islam as a favor and virtue from him. والكف عن حرم على معاوية وعائشة وطلحة وطلحة والزبير رحمهم الله أجمعين ومن كان معهم ولا تخاصم فيهم وكل 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 أمرهم إلى الله وكل أمر وأكل أمرهم إلى الله تبارك وتعالى فإن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إياكم إياكم وذكر أصحابي وأصحابي وأختاني abstain from discussion around the war of Ali and Muawiyah, Aisha, Talha and Al Zubair. May Allah have mercy upon all of them and whoever was with them. Do not debate about them and entrust their affair to Allah, blessed and exalted be He. Indeed, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Beware of mentioning my companions, married relatives and brethren in any disparaging way. Now what we see from this statement that's collected by Mu'ad Tabarani al-Mu'ajim al-Kabir is that this, whatever happened between Ali and Muawiyah, this is not classed as jihad, this is not classed as, these things are called waqa'ah or harb, they're classified as warfare and combat, fitting that happened between them. And we discussed this in the 13 centuries, right? These are affairs, we, we can only narrate these events and we move on from them. Because both, we have to remember, both of these people in which you had 10,000 plus companions that died in the Battle of Safim, Right, we're trying to get to the option and trying to get to the proof of the matter, and it was centered around the issue of the Khawarij and other affairs and trying to solve the murder of Uthman. Um, but we all give them their blessings and their goodness, and we say nothing about them. The people that debate about these affairs are usually astray people. <laughs> And he also said, Indeed Allah, blessed and exalted be he, looked at the people of Badr and said, Do what you will, indeed I have already forgiven you. Now this from Bukhari and Muslim is to do with the companion Hatib ibn Abi Balta' because he made, a, 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 he made a, a miscalculation because he was worried about the Rasulullah heading back to for the conquest of Mecca. So he sends a letter ahead to warn his family, to tell them, watch out, Muhammad is coming and you cannot deal with what he is coming with. Well, this letter, the angel Jibreel alayhi salam tells the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam that that letter has been sent. So he had to be informed that this and this is letter is being sent. So he sends Ali and another Sahabi to retrieve the letter. They bring it back. When this letter is read out, Omar radiallahu anhu who's there, he said, let me unsheathe my sword and cut the neck of this munafiq. But he says, Omar, no, this is not the case because Hatim al-Balta explained his case and why this had happened. And he said later in that same exchange, he said this expression, indeed Allah, blessings all to be, he looked at the people of Badr and said, do what you will, indeed I've forgiven you. Because it was an honest mistake and things, something like this can happen. And he's one of the people of Badr. And the people of Badr, some 70 people that attended Badr went and settled in Al-Kufa and blessed that little city. So we have to understand that the Sahaba are different people and distinct to us. We're all human, but we're a different type of human. We're all men, but we're a different type of men. And we have to understand that, that there's these distinctions. وَعَلَمْ رَحِمَكَ اللَّهُ أَنَّهُ لَا يُحِلُّ مَنَ مُرْئٍ مُسْلِمٍ إِلَّا بِطَيِّبَةٍ مَنْ نَفْسِهِ وَإِنْ كَانَ مَعَ رَجُلٍ مَالٌ حَرَامٌ فَقَدْ ضَمَنَهُ لَا يُحِلُّ لِأَحْدًا يَأْخُذَ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ فَإِنَّهُ عَسَنْ يَتُوبَ هَذَا فَيُرِيدُ أَنْ يُرَدَّهُ عَلَى أَرْبَابِهِ فَأَ May Allah have mercy upon you. You should know that the wealth of any Muslim is never permitted except with the permission given from himself and what is righteous. And if a man had some impermissible wealth with him, then took it and then took some security from it, is not permitted to take from it at all unless with his permission. Indeed, this man may repent from it and return it to where it came from. As for you taking of, as for you taking of it, this is impermissible. Well, Makasib, Mutlaqatan. ما بان لك صحته فهو مطلق إلا ما ظهر فساده وإن كان فاسد فاسدا يأخذ من الفساد ممسكه نفسه ولا تقول أترك المكاسب وأخذ ما عطون عطوني ما يفعل لم يفعل هذا الصحابة ولا العلماء إلى زماننا هذا. Earning is absolutely known according to what is clear to you, its validity and authenticity. That is a sound transaction. And this is only not the case when the corruption of the transaction is manifest. Right, so transmission transactions are known to be halal. And as we know, what is a sound transaction? What is a transaction? Services rendered or goods levied. Anything that's not, that is not a sound transaction. We keep it simple. A valid transaction is services rendered or goods levied. That's a sound transaction. 
Anything that's not that can't be taken. So it's generally understood that a transaction is permitted in halal until definite proof is brought otherwise. We don't start off saying, well, if we can't do this, then everything's haram. No, that's foolishness. Transactions are services rendered or goods levied. وَقَالَ عُمْرَ بْنُ الْخَطَابِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ كَسْبٌ فِيهِ بَعْضَ الدُّنْيَا بَعْضَ بَعْضَ الدُّنْيَا خَيْرٌ مِنَ الْحَجْرِ وَالنَّاسِ Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Earning by taking some kindling of sticks is better than being in need of the people. The five salah are permitted to pray behind any imam except if he is from Jahmiya as he denies the attributes of Allah. And if you had prayed behind him, you should repeat the salah. And if your imam for salah on Jumu'ah was from the Jah- Jahmiya and he is the ruler, make salah behind him and then repeat it. And if your imam and others are people of the sunnah, then make salah behind him and do not repeat your salah. Right, so understand this very clearly. So if there's a cultist or some, someone of, of, of wicked theology that's there, you make salah behind him if it's Jumu'ah and you have nowhere else to go. Or Eid, you have nowhere else to go. You make salah behind them and you repeat it, right? If it's someone of the sunnah, you don't repeat because the repetition of salah is because someone is either abusing the post of imamship or someone has some error. You're only allowed, you only have to not pray behind someone or repeat the salah when someone either has theology, this is bad, or they're an open rebellious sinner and whatever the case may be. Those are areas where you would not Pray behind someone that are agreed upon by everyone. Other other affairs are other affairs. Well, Iman will be in the Abba Bakr Omar Rahmatullahi Ali Hima, Fijati Aisha, the Mara Sudilahi Salah and Wasalam, Fad Kad 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 Dufina Hunaka Ma, Fayda a title Kabra for Teslim Ali Hima Wajib by the Rasulilahi Salah and Wasalam. One must have Iman that Abu Bakr and Omar, may Allah have mercy upon both of them, are in the chamber of. Aisha with the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, are interred with him. When you go to the grave, then giving salam to them is wajib after the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And what that means is he means in the sense of showing respect to the Rasul والسلام, and Abu Bakr and Umar, it's wajib to show respect to them. Whereas the salam, that's an issue of whether wajib here means sunnah or a good thing, but it's wajib to show respect to them. It's wajib to show them their rights. And then Abu Bakr and Umar are buried next to Rasulullah sallallahu Well, amru ma'rufi wa nahi an munkar wajibun illa man khafat sayfahu wa wasa. Enjoining the right and forbidding the wrong is wajib except when you are afraid of the sword and the stick of the ruler. Wa taslimu ala ibadi Allahi ajma'in. All of the slaves of Allah are to receive salam. Why? So you don't withhold the salam from people. Well, I don't know him. Or he's darker than me, or he's lighter than me, or he's from a different socioeconomic status than me. Or, well, because he's this and I'm not, then he's this. And because I'm this, or we speak the language better than him, then he's not. No. This is for all the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ تَرَكَ صَلَاةُ الْجُمْعَةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ مِنْ غَيْرِ عُذْرٍ فَهُمْ مُتَدَعُونَ وَالْعُذْرُ كَالْمَرَضِ لَا طَاقَةَ لَهُ بِالْخُرُوجِ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ وَأَوْ أَوْ خَوْفٌ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ سُلْطَانٍ ظَالِمٍ وَمَا سِوَى ذَلِكَ فَلَا عُذْرَ لَهُ Whoever abandoned Salat al-Jum'ah Salah in Jama'ah in the Masjid without excuse such a one is an innovator. The excuse including things such as illness that does not allow setting out to the masjid, fear of an oppressive ruler, while whatever is besides this has no excuse for it. And whoever made salah behind an imam and did not follow him in his actions through the salah, there is no salah for this person. Enjoining the right and forbidding the wrong is by the hand, tongue, and heart without a sword. Right? So, enjoining the right and forbidding the wrong does not involve the sword. When someone says, oh, so-and-so went and tried to kill so-and-so leader or so-and-so person, he's enjoining the right and forbidding the wrong. That's not enjoining the right and forbidding the wrong. Enjoining the right and forbidding the wrong does not involve the sword. It involves the words, and it involves the saying, and it involves dealing with the people. Whereas if what you're trying to say, oh, well, this is a type of jihad. Okay, well, the technical meaning of jihad is qital al-kufar, armed combat against the kufar. That's another Muslim. Are you trying to say he's an apostate? Are you trying to say he's... Ca- we have to understand the language of the revealed law 
to understand what it is you're trying to do. When you want to try to do something or when you use technical terms for things, you have to know what it is that you're saying when you try to do something. Otherwise, you speak presumptuously. And if you speak presumptuously, you speak without knowledge. And if you speak without knowledge, you say Allah which you don't know. And if you tell Luna ala Allah ma la ta'alimun, then walahum a'zabun azim. Then you have a severe, severe punishment to come. So this has to be kept in perspective. Wal masturu min al-Muslimin min al-tazhar lahu raiba. That which is that which is veiled from the Muslim should not be raised as a doubt when it had not been there. Right. So if there's no issue, there's no problem that's been raised. Someone raises something, some fitna that's been silent among the Muslims. And for some reason, he brings it up. This person is a shaitan because if, if the Muslims don't have that in a particular area and it's not there, you don't raise it, you don't bring it up. If an affair is hidden, you don't bring it up. Right? Affairs that are silent and dormant, you don't bring up silent and dormant fitna. Because that could ignite that fit. It could ignite them. وكل علم الإعداء على العباد من علم الباطن لم يوجد في الكتاب ولا في السنة فهو بدعة وضلالة ولا ينبغي لأحد أن يعمل ب يعمل له ولا يدعو إليه. Any knowledge that causes slaves to any internal knowledge not present in the book and sunnah is indeed innovation and astrayness, and it is not required for anyone to act by it or call to it. وَإِنَّمَا مَرَأَتْهُ وَهَمَتْ نَفْسَهَا لِلرَّجُلٍ فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ يُعَقِبَانِ إِنْ نَالَ مِنْهَا شَيْئًا إِلَّا بِوَلِيٍّ وَشَهِدَيْ عَدْمُ وَصِدَاقٍ Any woman that should bestow or gift herself to a man, she is not permitted for him to have a relationship with her. They are both to receive punishment if they do so. And nothing should be done like this except a nikah with a wali, two just witnesses and a bridal gift. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ الرَّجُلُ يَطْعَنَ عَلَى أَحَدِ مِنْ عَصْحَابِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ صَاحِبُ قَوْلِ السُّوءِ وَهَوَاء وَلِقَوْلِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم إِذَا ذُكِرَ أَصْحَابِ فَأَمْسِكُوا When you see the man who finds fault with any of the companions of the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, you should know that such a one is a carrier of an evil word and low desires, and one should adhere to the statement of the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. When my companions are mentioned, remain silent. فقد علم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما يكون منهم من الزلل بعد موته فلم يقل بهم إلا خيرا وقوله ذرو أصحابي لا تقول فيهم إلا خيرا ولا تحدث بشيء من الزلل ولا حربهم ولا ما غاب عنك علمه ولا تسمعه من أحد يحدث به فإنه لا يسلم لك قلبك إن سمعت And the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him already knew whatever slips and the like they had had up until after his death and he did not say anything of them but good and so he said refrain from my companions and do not say of them anything but good وإذا سمعت الرجل يطعن على الأثار أو يرد الأثار أو يريد غير الأثار فتمه على الإسلام ولا ولا تشك أنه صاحب هوى مبتدع and when you hear the man finding fault with the narrations rejecting narrations adding other than the narrations then hold him as something outside of the bounds of Islam and you should have no doubt that such a one is a carry of low desires an innovator وعلم أن جور السلطان لا ينقص فريضة من فرائد الله عز وجل التي افترضها على لسان نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم جوره على نفسه وتطوعك و وبارك معه تام لك إن شاء الله إن شاء الله تعالى يعني الجماعة والجمعة معهم والجهاد معهم وكل شيء من الطاعات فشاركهم فيه فتلك ف ف ف ف ف ف ف لك نيته. You should know that the tyranny of the ruler does not reduce any of the obligations of Allah, mighty and majestic, which have been declared on the tongue of His Messenger, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. The oppression of that ruler is upon himself, whilst you are. Whilst your optional acts and righteousness with him are completely for you, if Allah exalted be he wills. This means that the Jama'ah, Jummah, Jihad and every other act of obedience done with them, you are to share in that with them whilst your intention is solely yours. وَإِذَا رَيْتَ الرَّجُلُ يَدْعُوا عَلَى السُلْطَانِ فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ صَحِبُ هَوَاء وَإِذَا رَيْتَ الرَّجُلُ يَدْعُوا لِلسُلْطَانِ بِالصَّلَحِ فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ صَحِبُ سُنَّةِ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ يَقُولُ فَضِيلُ العياب وَلَوْ كَانَ لِي دَعْوَةٌ مَا جَعَلْتُهَا إِلَّا فِي السُلْطَانِ أَنَا أَحْمَدْ أَنْ أَنَّا أَحْمَدْ بْنَ كَامِلْ when you see the man making supplication against the ruler, then know that such a one is a carrier of low desires. And when you see the man making supplication for the ruler, that he be rectified, then you should know that this is a carrier of the sunnah if Allah wills. 
Al Fudail ibn Iyad used to say, if I had one supplication that I would make, it would be for the ruler. Then there is the case of Ahmad ibn Kamil. قال حدثنا الحسين بن محمد الطبري أنا مردوي الصائغ قال سمعت فضيل يقول لو أن لي دعوة مستجابة ما جعلتها إلا إلا في السلطان قيل له يا أبا أبا علي فسر لنا هذا قال إذا جعل إذا جعلتها في إذا جعلتها في نفسي لم تعدني وإذا جعلتها في السلطان صلح فصلح بصلاحه بصلاحه العباد والبلاد he said it was narrated to us by Al Hussein ibn Muhammad at Tabari. It was narrated to us by Mardawi as as Sahih, who said, "I heard Al Fudail ibn Iyad saying, if I had one supplication that was sure to be answered, I would have made it for the ruler." It was said to him, Abu Ali explained this to us. He said, "When I make the supplication for myself, it does not go past me, but when I make it for the ruler." That he might be rectified, his rectification benefits him, the slaves, and the land lands he governs. فأمرنا أن ندعو لهم بالصلاح ولم نؤمر أن ندعو عليهم وإن ظلموا وإن جاروا لأن ظلمهم وجورهم على أنفسهم والصلاح والصلاحهم بين أنفسهم والمسلمين. And we were ordered that we make supplication for the rectification, and we're not ordered to make the sup make supplication against them, even if they commit oppression and tyranny. This is the case as their oppression and tyranny is against themselves whilst the rectification is for themselves and the Muslims. Okay, so we're talking about, by rulers, we're talking about the rulers of the Muslims. These affairs that belong to them because we're talking about their leadership. We're talking about these people, right? That's what we're making reference to. None of the mothers of the believers should be mentioned except with good. وإذا رأيت الرجل يتعاهد الفرائض في جماعة من السلطان وغيره فاعلم أنه صاحب السنة إن شاء الله تعالى وإذا رأيت الرجل يتهاون بالفرائض في جماعة وإن كان مع السلطان فاعلم أنه صاحبه ف... And when you see the man that discharges from compulsory salah in jama'a with the ruler and other than him you should know that he is a carrier of the sunnah if Allah exalted be he wills Alright so understand when you see the man that discharges the compulsory salah in jama'a with the ruler and other than that, you should know that he's a carrier of the Sunnah if Allah exalted be so wills. But there's another portion that I, I didn't include here that's in the Arabic. And when you see the man that is lazy to make the compulsory salah in jama'ah, when you see the man that's lazy to make the compulsory salah in jama'ah, even if he should be with the ruler, then he is a carrier of innovation. So we see the man that's lazy to make the compulsory salah in jama'ah, even if with the ruler, then know that he is a carrier of innovation. And this is because this person is someone who's there for show or to take it from the leaders and rulers and wicked people. Right? So when you see that there's someone, well, he prays in jama'ah if it's in public, when he's by himself, ah. Eh. Right? If it's with the ruler, he might make a display, might not make a display because he's doing so for a display. وَالْحَلَالُ مَا شَهِدْتَ عَلَيْهِ وَحَلَفْتَ عَلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ حَلَالٌ وَكَذَلِكَ الْحَرَامُ مَا حَاكَ فِي صَدْرِكَ فَهُوْ شُهْبَ فَهُوْ شُبْهَ The halal is seen by what you testify of and take oaths of it being such. And likewise the haram is what will cause some constriction in yourself as it is doubtful. وَالْمَسْتُورُ مَنْ بَانَ سَتَرَهُ وَالْمَهْتُوكُ مَنْ بَانَ هَتْكَهُ That which has been concealed from being clear, he has concealed it while that which has been destroyed so that it does not become clear, he has destroyed it. So that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has concealed, you can't reach it at that moment, and that which he's destroyed, you can't get a hold of it. So if something's been concealed, some information's been concealed, we can't do anything but say Allahu alam about affairs going forward or about a particular thing or about a particular matter. We don't try to push through and force a matter. وَإِنْ سَمِعْتَ الرَّجُلُ يَقُولُ فُلَانٌ مُشَبِّهٌ وَفُلَانٌ يَتْكَلَّمُ فِي التَّشْبِيهِ فَتَمَهُّ وَعَلَمَ أَنَّهُ جَهْمِيٌّ وَإِذَا سَمِعْتَ الرَّجُلُ يَقُولُ فُلَانٌ نَاصِبِي فَاعْلَمْ لَهُ 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 فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ الرَّافِضِي وَإِذَا سَمِعْتَ الرَّجُلُ يَقُولُ تَكَلَّمَ بِالتَّوْحِيدِ تَكَلَّمْ بِالتَّوْحِيدِ وَأَشْرَحْ لِي تَوْحِيدِ فَاعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ يُخَارِجِي مُعْتَزِلِي When you hear the man saying such and such is مُشَبِّهٌ or he says such and such speaks of Tashbih, get away from him as he is from the Jahmiyyah 
and when you hear the man saying such and such is nasibi you should know that such an individual is from the rafida and when you hear the man saying speak about tawheed explain to me tawheed you should know that he is from the khawarij the mu'tazila right because these are bid'a talking points when you hear people using this type of language oh so and so's mushabbir he's mujassim or tell me about tawheed what is tawheed when you hear this type of language being done these are people of deep innovation they're not people of the sunnah and you you avoid these type of people أو يقول فلان مجبر يتكلم بالإجبار وتكلم بالعدل فعلم أنه قدري لأن هذه الأسماء محدثة أحدثها أهل الأهواء وإذا يهي the man saying such and such is from Jabariya or he is saying he speaks like the Jabariya or he speaks of the justice a lot then you should know that such an individual is from the Qadiriya this is the case as these names and titles are newly invented matters brought about by the people of low desires. Qala Abdullah ibn Mubarak La ta'khudu an ahl al-kufati fi al-rafdi shay'a wa la an ahl al-sham fi al-sayf shay'a wa la an ahl al-basrati fi al-qadri shay'a wa la an ahl al-khurasan fi al-irja' shay'a wa la an ahl makkah fi al-sarf wa la an ahl al-madinah fi al-ghina la ta'khudu anhum fi hadhihi al-ashya' shay'a Imam Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak said, Do not take anything from the people of Al-Qufa regarding the doctrine of Rafd, anything from the people of Sham regarding the drawn sword, anything from the people of Al-Basra in the doctrine of Al-Qadr, anything from the people of Khurasan regarding Ijra, anything from the people of Makkah regarding Sarf, anything from the people of al Madinah regarding singing and instruments do not take any of these things from them so what this is talking about is this is post first three generations because imam al baba is living in the aftermath of this before you could say in the times of the tabi'in that you take unrestrictedly the first three generations from al basra unrestrictedly from mecca unrestrictedly from al madina unrestrictedly from al kufa you could do so unrestrictedly because the sahaba and their students were there and those people were there and they were physically there in al barbahari's time he said listen abdullah mubarak is talking about the time that's coming after him where he says don't take anything from the people of kufa regarding the doctrine of rafa because the shia's strength their power base started to come from there the people of sham regarding the draw sword because in sham at that time they started to pick up the sword and use violence as we see now right you don't take that from them right other things you take from them but you don't take that from them from al basra regarding the doctrine of al qadr because the mu'tazila and the qadriya they came out of al basra Right? They came out of Al-Basra. Khurasan regarding Irja, the Murjia, came out of came out of Khurasan. Mecca regarding Sarf, because they had some issues in Arabic regarding Sarf and transactions. al Medina regarding singing and instruments. That stuff started there and started to spread from there. So post that time of the blessed generations, from what was to come, you don't take those things from them. You wouldn't say, oh, well, because so-and-so is from al Medina, he must be telling the truth. That's now. He's not from Quran for that. That's now. So you put them on balance with the first three generations and you don't unrestrictedly take these affairs. وَإِذَا الرَّيْتَ الرَّجْلُ يُحِبُّ أَبَا هَرِيرًا وَأَنَسَ بِنْ مَالِكْ وَأُسَيْدِ بِنْ حُضَيْرًا فَعْلَمْ أَنْهُ صَحِبُ الصُّنَّةِ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ وَإِذَا الرَّيْتَ الرَّجْلُ يُحِبُّ أَيُّوب وَأَبْنْ عَوْنْ وَأَيُّونُسِ بِنْ عُبَيْدْ وَعَبْدُ اللَّهِ مِنْ إِدْرِيسَ الْأَدْوِي وَالشَّعْبِ وَمَالِكِ بِنْ Sayyid ibn Hudayr, you should know that he is a carrier of the Sunnah of Allah, exalted be he. Because he loves the companions. He's showing love to the senior most of the companions in terms of hadith. Continue. And when you see the man showing love to Ayyub ibn Aun, Yunus ibn Ubaid, Abdullah ibn Idris, Al Adawi, Ash, Ashabi, Malik ibn Mughawal, Yazid ibn Zuraik, and Mu'ad ibn Mu'ad, you should know that he is a carrier of the Sunnah. Wa Wahab ibn Jarir, wa Hamad ibn Salama, wa Hamad ibn Zayd, wa Malik ibn Anas, wa Lawza'i, wa Zayd ibn Qudama, fa'alam anhu sahib al-Sunnah. With the right al-Rajul yuhibu Ahmad ibn Hanbal, wa Al-Hujaj ibn Minhal, wa Ahmad ibn Nasr, wa Zakarahum b-Khayr, wa Qala b-Qawlihim, fa'alam anhu sahib al-Sunnah. And when you see the man showing love towards Wahab ibn Jarir, Hamad ibn Salama, Hamad ibn Zaid, Malik ibn Anas, Al-Awza'i, Zaid ibn Qudama, 
Zaida ibn Qudama, you should know that he is a carrier of the Sunnah. And when you see the man showing love towards Ahmad ibn Hanbal al Hajjaj ibn al Minhal, Ahmad ibn Nasir, and he mentions them with good and speaks according to their statements, you should know that he is a carrier of the Sunnah. Now, someone may say, well, wait a minute. Why is it that Imam Abu Hanifa and Al Qadr Abu Yusuf or Muhammad bin Hassan al Shaybani, similar people like this, how, why is it they're not mentioned in here in terms of knowing who the people of Sunnah? There are two pressing reasons for this. Okay? The first is that Hamad ibn Salama is mentioned, and Hamad ibn Salama is their theological and fiqh father in that sense. So by mentioning him, you are mentioning them. Okay? Number two, Imam Abu Hanifa and them, they did not, they were not known for publishing widely their theological positions in total and spreading them amongst the people. Because the times that Imam Abu Hanifa lived in and others was the time just preceding the 72 sects. It was before the big explosion. So their time, their statements of Imam Abu Hanifa against the Qadari and other things such as this, or Abu Yusuf against them, but the time immediately before the explosion of the 72 sects, there were only pieces and portions against things like the Khawarij against uh, the slow birth of the Mu'tazila as a group, some of the ideas of Qadr. So that's why they're not mentioned. It's not that uh, Imam Barbahari does not think that Imam Hanifa or these other people are from the Sunnah because they're from his era and before. And he's alive during the same time as these people. And they are from the Salaf. Imam Hanifa is from the Tabi'een, he's from the Salaf. The Tabi'i Tabi'een is from the students. al qadr Abu Yusuf, al waqi ibn al-Jarrah. Abu Yusuf, uh, Ya'qub Ibrahim al-Ansari, Muhammad Hassan al-Shaybani. They're from that era, but they're included either with Hamad ibn Salama, or they're not mentioned for mentioning theology because they didn't write on it extensively to the degree regarding the 72 sects, because in their immediate aftermath, they weren't there. In their immediate time, the 72. That's, so that, that's why that's the case. So it's not that they were omitted with any malice or purposeful intent. وَإِذَا الرَّيْتَ الرَّجُلُ جَالِسٌ مَعَ أَمْرَجُلٌ مَنْ أَهْلَ الْأَهْوَاءِ فَحَذَرَهُ وَعَرَّفَهُ فَإِنْ جَلَسَ مَعَهُ بَعْدَ مَا عَلِمَ فَاتَّقِهُ فَإِنَّهُ صَاحِبُ هَوَاء And when you see the man sitting in the gatherings of a man from the people of low desires, warn him and inform him of the affairs. And if he should continue in those gatherings with him after he knows the truth of the affair, then beware of him as he is a carrier of low desires. Because the person has to take warning. You've warned him, you told him, listen, stay away from those people have these problems. You advise him of these things. Now it's up to them if they want to be poisoned. That's why sometimes slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they send me videos, they say, whether well, what do you think of this? Uh, I've heard this about this person. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You think a product might be poisonous. Now you've sent it to me for me to drink it? You have to be on, you have to be honest with yourself about this. I'm not sure whether this is Brother Abu Jafar, is this food out of date? Could you taste it? I'm not gonna taste it, you taste it. If you're not sure whether it's poison, you eat it. If it's if you think it might be poison Brother Jafar, what do you think about him? I don't know. I don't think about other men. I like ladies. I don't think about other men. Don't ask me about what I think about these people. Well Brother Jafar, what would you say about him? I don't say anything. The same thing I've said for years. And I'll say it one more time. As a matter of personal uh, habit and practice, I do not take from anyone less than a faqih. Because I make taqlid of people. I don't take in from anyone less than a faqih. If you're less than a faqih, I, I probably won't know who that is. And it doesn't mean he's not a scholar. He probably will be. But I wouldn't know. Because the lowest person I'll take from is fuqaha. Because fuqaha deal with new issues. And new things. That, because that's what I'm worried about is the new things and what's happening. <laughs> So I don't take from anyone less than a faqih. So if you ask me about your favorite mufti or your favorite speaker or your favorite caller and what he said about this and he cried and he broke down when he recited the Quran and he reached the ayah about, I wouldn't know who he is. Maybe because he's a nobody or maybe he's not a nobody, but I just don't know who he is. So to me, he's nobody. So don't ask me about these people because I don't know who they are unless they're fuqaha or muhaddeen or people like this. Now, that's not necessarily the statement that everyone ha else has to abide by. But what I'm saying is, if you have doubts about someone and whether or not he's a poison chalice waiting to uh, cause you spiritual death, don't send him to other people. And don't send him to me. If you think something's poisonous, Brother Wajafar, I'm not sure whether uh, drinking hemlock might kill you. Could you just try it out? No. These people are poisonous. If you, you listen to him and find out, tell me how it happened. Well, I just have doubts about it. Well, if you have doubts, are you supposed to leave that which you're doubtful of to that which you're not doubtful of? 
So then really it's solved, isn't it? So be careful about this and beware of this type of thing. And when you see the man who, when a narrative is brought to him, he denies it, does not desire it, and instead said he desires the Quran, there is no doubt that this man, that this is a man that has gone over to Zandaka, stand up from his gathering and get away from him. Because the Quran and Sunnah, they go together. If someone says, oh, I only want the Quran. Yes, but the Quran is elucidated by the Sunnah. And you should know that, and you should know that the low desires are all rejected and contemptible with all of them calling to the sword. That means execution because these people, some of them, in general, they're kufar and some of them can get killed as murtadin. So these beliefs call to the sword, which their end result is a fire where the wrath of Allah will abide, where you will never exit. And the, pre, the, the process before that is the head being separated from the body as execution as a kafir or as a judicial punishment to stop your fitna. That's, that's what that means. The most contemptible and filled with kufr or the of them are the Rawafid, Mu'tazila, and Jahmiya as they push the people towards negating the attributes as well as apostasy. You should know that whoever sought to bring a bad opinion against any of the companions of Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, you should know that he intended by that, that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, Blessings of Allah be upon him. This individual has annoyed the Prophet. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him in his grave. And when some individual has manifested to you something of the different innovations, warn him of that. For indeed, that which he has concealed from you is far more than that which he has manifested. So understand, someone reveals to you some innovation, what they're holding is worse than what they've shown you. They might just be testing the water out first. Understand that. So that so maybe by you warning him of that, he'll take heed of that and take warning of that. But when someone re reveals to you some of that, he's only revealing to you a portion of that. And it may be that what's under there is worse. So tell him the, the individual so that they might take warning of that. Take warning from what they've revealed, revealed to you of it and take warning of that which is worse that they've been showing to you. When you see the man that is upon the sunnah and yet he is traveling the way and school of those who would make him a rebellious sinner, open sinner, one of those engaged in disobedience and astray from the path, you should keep his companionship and sit with him as his disobedience shall not harm you. Right, so he has the correct things of the people, but he commits sins. But he doesn't justify the sins. He doesn't say they're halal. He doesn't say it's okay to sin. But he has some sins. You should keep company with this person because it may be but through your positive impact on him that he may go away from those sinful behaviors. But the advice is different with an innovator who's pious, right? So let's look at this particular situation. If you should see the man that is a carrier of evil desire and yet he is earnest in worship to the degree that he shivers in fear and is forthright in earnest worship you should not sit in gatherings with him and sit with him or listen to his words you should not even go in the road with him as indeed there is no surety that if you follow the, if you follow his path that you will not be destroyed right along with him right because his sins his sins can harm himself and you Whereas the carrier of the sunnah, his theology and other things are correct, but maybe he's sinful in some areas. Those sins can't hurt you. Because you know, all right, I can't do that. And maybe by being around that person, there'll be a good impact on him. But the innovator, his innovation harms him and it harms other people as well. 
ورأى يونس بن عبيد الله وقد خرج من عند صاحب هوا فقال يا يا بني من أين جئت قال من عند فلان قال يا بني لأن أراك خرج خرجت من بيت خنزاء أحب إلي من أن أراك تخرج من بيت فلان من بيت فلان وفلان لأن تلقى الله يا بني زانيا فاسقا صادقا خائنا أحب إلي من أن تلقاه بقول فلان وفلان وفلان ألا ترى أن يونس بن عبيد قد علم أن خنزاء لا يضل ابنه عن دينه وأن صاحب البدعة يضل حتى يكفر Yunus ibn Ubaid saw that his son went out one day and was with a carrier of evil desires. Ibn Ubaid said, My dear son, where did you go? The son responded, I was just with so-and-so. Yunus ibn Ubaid then remarked, My dear son, if I had seen you come out of the house of a hermaphrodite in a dubious situation, Dubious meaning sexual. That would have been more beloved to me than that I see you go out of the house of so-and-so. So if he'd been caught in a dubious situation, dubious sexual situation with a hermaphrodite, that would have been more beloved to him than that he gets seen coming out of the house of an innovator. Because the theology is worse than that. Because the sin of being with a being with a hermaphrodite and being involved in a dubious sexual situation, that's less in severity than being with an innovator or someone like that can get you in the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will abide forever. You die on that, you're lost, it's finished, it's over for you. But a hermaphrodite, that's a sin, you must repent from that. You've done something wicked and everything else. My dear son, I say this as if you met Allah as a fornicator, rebellious sinner, thief or traitor that would have been more beloved to me that you meet him upon the word of so-and-so. Don't you see that Yunus ibn Ubaid knew that the hermaphrodite would not lead his son astray from his religion and that the carrier of innovation would lead him astray until he fell into kufr? Wahdhar, wahdhar, thumma ahdhar ahla zamanik khasatan. وانظر من تدا ون وانظر من تجالس ومن من تسمع ومن تصحب فإن الخلق كأنهم في رد في ردة إلا من عص من من عصمه عصمه الله منهم. Take heed then beware of the people of your time specifically. Hold on, say that again. Take heed then beware of the people of your time specifically. Say that one more time. Take heed then beware of the people of your time specifically. So beware of the people of your time specifically. So he's talking to everybody that's going to read this and thereafter. Why? Because we're in the time of the Khalif. The Salaf, we know where they are. Companions, Jannah bound. We know where they are. Tabi'een, Jannah bound. We know where they are. Tabi Tabi'een, Jannah bound. We know where they are. Okay. The time after, now we have to start testing them by the generations that came before. So we have to read that one statement again. Take heed, then beware of the people of your time specifically. Okay. Continue. Watch carefully with whom you sit in gatherings, listen to their statements, share companionships with as the creation. <clears throat> it is as if they are all in apostasy and rebellion, except the one who Allah has safeguarded from among them. Okay, so the people that are in rebellion against the first two generations, they're either in apostasy, ridda, which is uh, going into kufr after having known Islam, or they're in rebellion in some way, shape, or form. If they're not following that, then they're in rebellion or apostasy. Because either they know, or if they know, they'd be kufar, they'd be muratadim. If they don't know, then they're rebellious, they're fujar, so on and so forth. وَانْظُرْ إِذَا سَمِعْتَ الرَّجُلَ يَذْكُوا إِبْنُ إِبْنَ أَبِي دُعَاد وَبِشْرَ الْمُرِيسِ وَثُمَامَ أَوْ أَبَى الْخُذَيَلْ وَإِبْنُ شَيْمَ الْفُوطِ أَوْ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْ أَتْبَعِهِمْ وَأَشْيَعِهِمْ فَاحْذَرْهُ فَإِنَّهُ صَحِبُ بِدْع فإن هؤلاء كانوا على الردة وترك هذا الرجل الذي ذكرهم بخير ومن ومن ذكرهم منه. Look closely at when you hear the man mentioning Ibn Abi Da'ud, Bishr al Marisi, Thumana Abu Hudayl, Hisham al Futi, or any of their fol of their followers or party. When this happens, warn him as this is a carrier of innovation. Indeed, the aforementioned are upon apostasy. Leave the man who should mention them in good standing or mentions himself among them. Right, so when you see people mentioning the people of wickedness that are known, and they mention, and they mention the people of wickedness and good standing, you have to know that this person is in danger, either on purpose or rebellion, and you have to get away from it. Right? So these are things you have to be mindful of because they can destroy you. Just like when you find the people inclining towards the people of righteousness and good and goodness. Okay, that's someone I should incline towards because they're holding to the first three generations. Holding to the first three generations. Did Allah say this in his book? Did, he, did his messenger say this? Yes. Is everyone agreed upon this from the first three generations and consensus? Yes. Then that should be established. 
when that's established by the book, Sunnah, first few generations and the understanding and the consensus down to, then subhanAllah, there's no dispute with that. We follow that, we don't increase on it, and we don't, uh, we don't increase on it, and we don't decrease of it. Right? We follow that strictly. Right? وَالْمِحْنَةُ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ بِدْعَةٌ وَأَمَّ الْيَوْمَ فَيَتَمَنْحَنُ بِالسُنَّةِ لِقَوْلِهِ إِنْ هَذَا الدِّينَ دِينٌ إِنَّ هَذَا الْعِلْمَ دِينٌ فَانْظُرُوا عَمَّا تَأْخُذُونَ دِينَكُمْ وَلَا تَقْبَلْ وَلَا تَقْبَلُوا الْحَدِيثَ إِلَّا مِمَّا تَقْبَلُونَ شَهَادَتَهُ فَتَنْظُرُوا فَإِنْ كَانَ صَاحِبُ السُنَّةِ لَهُ مَعْرِفَةٌ صُدُوقٌ صُدُوقٌ كَتَبْتَ عَنْهُ وَإِلَّا تَرَكْتَهُ Carrying out of the Inquisition in Islam is an innovation. Right, so testing people. What do you believe about this? What do you believe about that? What do you say about this? Hey, brother, I was just wondering, what do you say about that? This is the mihna. This is an, in, this is an inquisition. That's not part of the deen. What do you say about this? I heard some brothers saying this. Wait a minute, hold on. This comes to two issues. Do you know the answer to this question? Yeah, I know the answer to the question. So what are you asking me for? Because if you're asking me, then that means you're trying to get something out of me. Okay, well, do you know the answer to the question? Well, no, I don't. Okay, well, then we need to get to the bottom of what the answer to the question is. But usually when people ask, ask these type of questions, what do you say about this? What do you say about that? What do you say about that? How do you feel about this? Right? Especially when feelings get involved. Right? This is, this is a religion that's not based on your feelings. So read that part again and let's build from there. Carrying out of the Inquisition in Islam is an innovation. As for today, the Sunnah is under Inquisition and we test by it based upon the statement, indeed this ilm is religion. So examine from whom you take your religion. Okay, so this ilm is religion. This ilm is religion. Examine from whom you take your religion. Who are you taking this religion from? Continue. Do not accept the hadith except from whom you would accept his testimony. All right, accepting your testimony, you can only accept testimony from someone who's been established in good standing regarding his creed, that he prays five times a day, and he establishes the agreed upon sunan that everyone have agreed upon. When that's established, you can take witness from him. You can take witness from him, you can take hadith from him. Continue. Look carefully at the matter. If he is a carrier of the sunnah, then he has truthfulness and truthful conduct. Write and take from him, and if he does not have this, then you are to leave him. وَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ الْإِسْتِقَامَةَ عَلَى الْحَقِّ وَإِنْ وَإِنْ أَرَدْتَ الْإِسْتِقَامَةَ عَلَى الْحَقِّ وَطَرِيقِ وَطَرِيقِ أَهْلِ السُّنَّةِ قَبْلَ 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 if you indeed desire establishment and long standing upon the truth and the way of Muslim orthodoxy before you, beware of speculative theology and the people of speculative theology, debates, disputes, analogy, debates in the religion. Indeed, if you have lent an ear to them or accept something from them, some doubt will find its way into the heart. Destruction is sure to come if you accept anything from them. <laughs> كانت زندقة قط ولا بدعة ولا هوى ولا طلالة إلا من الكلام والجدال والمراء والقياس وهي أبواب البدعة والشكوك والزندقة. There is no zandaka innovation, low desire, or strainness except that it came from speculative theology, debates, arguments, and analogy in religion, and these are doors of innovation, doubts, and zandaka. فالله الله في نفسك وعليك بالأثر وأصحاب الأثر. والتقليد فإن الدين إنما هو التقليد هو بالتقليد يعني للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أصحابه رضوان الله عليهم أجمعين ومن قبل ومن قبل أن يدعونا في 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 لبس قلدهم مسترحة ولا تجاوز الأثر والأثر الأثر الله الله take care of yourself you must follow the narratives the people that follow them and be sure to make taqlid. Right, so when you hear someone say, oh, I don't make taqlid of anybody, I don't blind follow anyone, that's the marker right there, okay, I need to be careful this person. The religion is nothing but the lead to that of the Prophet. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and his companions. May Allah be pleased with them and those that came before us. They will not abandon us in any confusion. Whoever should make the lead of any of them, find in rest. Find rest in that. Do not transgress the narratives of the Prophet of the people of narratives. Waqf, waqif, عند المتشابه ولا تقصع شيئا. Stop at the mutashabi reports and do not make any analogies whatsoever. Right, the mutashabihat, right, or the mutashabiha reports are the reports where the reality of them is not known to us, so we must affirm the generalities of them. And we already have two uh, lengthy appendices regarding this, inshallah, for those seeking further details. 
ولا تطلب من عندك حيلة ترد بها على أهل بدعة فإنك أمرت بالسقوط بالسقوط عنهم ولا تمكنهم من نفسك فأما علمت أن محمد بن سيرين في فضله لم لم يجب رد رجلا من أهل بدعة في مسألة واحدة ولا سمع منه آية من كتاب الله عز وجل فقيل له فقال أخاف أن أن يحرفها فيقع في قلب شيء Do not seek any power from yourself with which to refute the people of innovation. Hold on, say that again. Do not seek any power from yourself with which to refute the people of innovation. One more time. Do not do not seek any power from yourself with which to refute the people from people of innovation. Okay, so you understand from this then we're not going to go, well, I'm going to beat the person of Aristotle at his own game. I'm going to beat the people of Socrates at his own game. I'll drink more hemlock than him. I'll do more logic than him. I'll use more this than him. No, don't do that. Instead, follow this. Continue. Indeed, you have been commanded to be silent towards them and not give them any means to your innermost being. Don't you know that Imam Muhammad ibn Sirin, in all of his virtue, did not let a man from the people of innovation bring him anything, not even one point. He did not even listen to one ayah of the book of Allah, mighty and majestic, from such a man. Someone asked him why, and he said, I fear that he will corrupt it and them something from that will find fixity in my heart. Why? Right, so we didn't even listen to the Quran from them. I don't take from them. But I take it from means I don't even listen to the Quran. Well, how could they corrupt the Quran? Stranger things have happened and we've seen it be done. No, we're not taking anything from them. We don't take anything from them. I don't want to hear your mushaf. I don't want to hear your qira. I don't want to watch. I don't want to know how you make lemon meringue pie. I don't want anything from you. I don't want anything from you. Nothing. Okay? Just get away from me. Because when you start that type of fitting and that stuff, there's always something that comes behind it. And it could be something so simple as, oh, that's why we should be good to our neighbors. And then they introduce the innovation and they start, how did we get from here to here? And it's, it's happened where I've been in the masjid and seated somewhere. And he, might just, he was speaking something about to, something to do with being neighborly. And then all of a sudden innovation got brought in. How did we get from Tekfir to all the Sahaba except for eight? And we were talking about being good to your neighbor. This is na'udhu billah, how these things happen. So be careful of these types of things because they're big fitna. Big fitna. وَإِذَا سَمِعْتَ الرَّجُلُ يَقُولُ إِنَّا نَحْنُ نُعَظِّمُ اللَّهِ إِذَا سَمِعْ أَثَارِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَعَلَمَ أَنْهُ جَهْمِي يُرِيدُ أَنْ يُرَدُّ أَثَارَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَيَدْفَعُهُ بِهَذِهِ الْكَلِمَةِ وَهُوَ يَزْعُمُ أَنَّهُ يَعْظِمُ اللَّهُ وَيَنَزِّهُ وَإِذَا سَمِعَ الْحَدِيثَ الرُّؤْيَا وَحَدِيثُ النُّزُولِ وَغَيْرِ when you see the man saying, Indeed, we respect and honor Allah, and he does this when he hears the narratives of the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, you should know that he is from the Jahmiyyah and wants to negate the narrative of the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And this very statement negates him while he claims that he respects and honors Allah, declares him above floor when he hears the hadith of the vision, the hadith of the descent, and other hadith besides that. أفليس رضو عثر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وإذا قال إن نعظم الله أن يزول من موضوع إلى موضع فقد زعم أن أعلم أعلم بالله من غيره فاحذر هؤلاء فإن جمهور الناس من السوق من السوق وغيرهم على هذا الحال وحذر الناس منهم. Did this person not just reject the narrative of the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, when he falsely said, We respect and honor Allah, and he does this to go from place to place and then claims that he is more knowledgeable of Allah than anyone else. Take heed of such a person of such people, as most of the rabble and others have this understanding, and the rest of the people take heed of them. فقد زعم أنه أعل أعل أعلم بالله من غيره فاحذر هؤلاء فإن جمهور الناس من من السوقة وغيرهم على هذا الحال وحذر الناس منهم وإذا سألك أحد عن عن من عن مسألة في هذا الكتاب وهو مسترشد فكلمه وأشرده وإذا جاءك يناظرك فاحذره فإن في المناظرة ومراء والجدال والمغالمة والخصومة والغضب وقد نهيت وال والغضب فقد نهيت عن هذا جدا if anyone should ask you about a point in this text and he is seeking guidance, then advise and guide this one. And when he comes to you in order to debate, beware of him as in the area of debate, dispute, disputation, fighting, exaggerated displays and the like that we have forbidden from with earnestness. <laughs> All of these 
two things leave from the path of the truth and not one of our thick scholars and senior teachers saw that arguing, debating fight and fighting was a means to knowledge. وقال الحسن البصري الحكيم لا يماري ولا يداري في حكمته أن ينشرها إن قبلت حمد الله وإن وإن رد حمد الله وجاء الرجل الحسن فقال أنا أنذرك في الدين فقال الحسن أنا أعرف ديني فإن ضل دينك فذهب فطلبه Imam al Hassan al Basri said, "The wise one does not debate or argue on behalf of his wisdom in order to spread it. If it is accepted, he will praise Allah, and if it is rejected, he will praise Allah." A man came to Hassan al Basri and said, "I will debate with you on the topic of the religion in some areas." Al Basri responded, "I know my religion, so if your religion leads you astray, go and seek it out." وسمع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قوما على باب حجرته يقول أحدهم ألم يقول الله كذا وقال الآخر ألم يقول ألم يقول الله كذا فخرج مغضبا فقال أبي هذا أمرتم أم بهذا بعثت إليكم أن تضربوا كتاب الله بعضه ببعض فنهى عن الجدال. The messenger of Allah peace and blessings of Allah be upon him once heard at the door of one of his chambers, two groups of people arguing. One of them said, did, did not Allah say? And another group said, did not Allah say? He came out angry and said, is this what I commanded you? Is this what I was sent to you, sent you to do? Taking one part of the book of Allah and using it against the other. So he forbade from debate and disputation. <laughs> إلى يومنا هذا وقول الله عز وجل أكبر من قول الخلق قال الله تبارك وتعالى ما يجادل في آيات الله إلا الذين كفروا and Ibn Umar used to dislike debate as well as Malik Ibn Anas and those above him below him in rank all the way up until until this time of ours and the word of Allah mighty and majestic is greater than the word of the creation Allah blessed and exalted has said, non dispute in the signs of Allah except those who do not believe. A man once asked Umar ibn al Khattab, What does it mean when A man once asked Umar ibn al Khattab, What does the following ayah mean? And by the groups arrayed, Umar ibn al Khattab replied, If I had found that your head was shaved, I would have beheaded you. Now what this is talking about is one of the Khawarij asked him about this ayah trying to trying to debate before because there's certain ayat we do not know but the Khawarij are known that the Mutashabi had ayat that they would try to debate and ask. So when Umar met this man, his name was Abdullah al Sagir. He said, remove your amama so that I might see your, see your head. So when he removed it, he saw he had a full head of hair. He said, had I found your head shaved, I would have, I would have killed you immediately. Because you don't ask about these things. And it's clear that uh, Abdullah al Sayyid was new to Islam. So he said, okay, this is new. We don't ask about the new to Shabi Hatta yet. All right, we don't ask about these things. وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم المؤمن لا يماري ولا أشفع للمماري يوم القيامة فدعوا المراء لقلة خيره. The Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, the believer does not debate nor seek audience for debate. On the day of resurrection, I will not make intercession for the debater, so leave disputation due to the little good that is in it. It is not permitted, permitted for a Muslim man to say, such and such is a carrier of the Sunnah, until he knows of him that he gathered with him the qualities of the Sunnah. And it should not be said that someone is a carrier of the Sunnah until he has gathered within the Sunnah in totality. قال عبد الله المبارك أصل 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 اثنين وسبعين هواء أربع أهواء فمن هذه الأربع أهواء إن 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 شعبت هذه الاثنان وسبعون هواء القدرية والمرجية والشيعة والخوارج. The Imam Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak declared the origin of the 72 groups of evil desires are four groups of evil desires that subdivided and led to those 72 groups of desires and they are al-Qadiriyya, al-Murjiyya, the Shia and the Khawarij. 
فمن قدم أبا بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي على أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولم يتكلم في الباقين إلا بخير ودعا لهم فقد خرج من التشيع أوله وآخره ومن قال الإيمان قول وعمل يزيد وينقص فقد خرج من الإرجاء, كل من الإرجاء كله أوله وآخره so whoever gives Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman and Ali presidents over the rest of the companions of the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, while not speaking of the remainder of them except with good and make supplications for them, has indeed left from the Shia court the first of it and the last of it. And whoever said that Iman is words and actions and that Iman increases and decreases, then he has left from the Murjia believes in totality the first and last of it. فقد خرج من تشيع أوله وآخره ومن قال الإيمان قول وعمل ويزيد ويزيد وينقص فقد خرج من الإرجاء كله أوله وآخره ومن قال الصلاة خلف كل بر وفاجر والجهاد مع كل خليفة ولم يرى الخروج على السلطان بالسيف ودعا لهم بالصلاح فقد خرج من قول الخوارج أوله وآخره and whoever said that the Salah is valid behind any right, righteous or sinful ruler make jihad with a Khalifa is valid and does not hold to the position of rebellion against the ruler with the sword make supplication for his rectification has left from the doctrine of the Khawarij from the first of it and the last of it. ومن قال المقادير المقادير كلها من الله عز وجل خيرها وشرها يضل من يشاء ويهدي من يشاء فقد خرج من قول القدرية أوله وآخره وهو صاحب السنة Whoever should say that all ordained things are from Allah mighty and majestic the good of it the bad of it he leads astray whom he wills and guides whom he wills then he has left from the doctrine of the Qadriya from the first of it and the last of it and has become a carrier of the sunnah وبدعة ظهرت هي كفر بالله العظيم ومن قال بها فهو كافر بالله لا شك فيه من يؤمن بالرجع. There is an innovation that has spread which is kufr against Allah. The grand and whoever speaks of it is indeed an unbeliever in the sight of Allah without any doubt in it and is the doctrine of the return. ويقول علي بن ابي طالب حي وسيرجع قبل يوم القيامه ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد بن موسى بن جعفر وتكلموا في الامامه وانهم يعلمون الغيب فاحذرهم فانهم كفار بالله العظيم ومن قال بهذا القول This doctrine entails that whoever says that Ali ibn Talib is living and shall return before the day of resurrection Muhammad ibn Ali Jafar ibn Muhammad and Musa ibn Jafar spoke on the doctrine of imama and that they know the unseen. Beware of such people as they are unbelievers in the sight of Allah, the most grand, and whoever speaks with this statement is of the same ruling. Tu'ma ibn Amr and Sufyan ibn Uyayna both said, whoever stopped at the mention of Uthman and Ali in discussing them, such a one is from the Shia. One should not take from that person, take knowledge from him, or sit in gatherings with that person. Whoever gave Ali rank over Uthman is indeed from the Rafida, and he has rejected the narrative of the companions of the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. ومن قدم ثلاثة على جماعتهم وترحم على باقين وكف عن زللهم فهو على طريق الاستقامة والهدى من هاد في هذا الباب. And whoever gave precedence of three over the jama'ah sent mercy upon, upon the remaining ones. Abstain from their slips is indeed on the path of establishment and guidance on this topic. والسنة أن تشهد أن تشهد أن العشرة الذين شهد لهم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بالجنة أنهم في الجنة لا شك فيه. The Sunnah is that you bear witness that the ten promised paradise, whom the Messenger of Allah peace and blessings of Allah bore witness of them, are indeed in the paradise without any doubt about it. ولا تفرد بالصلاة على أحد إلا للرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله فقط. We do not individually send expression peace and blessings of Allah upon anyone except the Messenger and his family alone. And you know that Uthman ibn Affan was killed out of oppression and the one who killed him was indeed an oppressor. 
في هذا الكتاب وآمن به واتخذه إماما ولم يشك في حرف منه ولم يجحد حرفا واحدا فهو صاحب السنة وجماعة كامل قد كملت كم كم فيه السنة And whoever affirmed what is in this book believed in it took a, as a leader to him expressed no doubt in any letter of it did not deny one letter of it is indeed a carrier of the sunnah and jama'ah and complete and you have indeed completed the sunnah. And whoever denied one letter of what is in this book doubted in one letter, doubted or hesitated in one portion of it. Indeed, such a one is a carrier of low desires. And whoever denied or doubted in one letter of the Quran or in something that came from the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, shall meet Allah, exalted be he, as a denier of him. Fear Allah, take heed and safeguard your iman. ألا تعين أحدا على معصية الله ولا أول الخير ولا ولا خلق أجمعين ولا طاعة لبشر في معصية الله. It is from the Sunnah that you do not assist or aid anyone in disobedience to Allah, nor turn people or the rest of people away from the good. And it's from the Sunnah that there is no obedience to a man in disobedience to Allah. ولا يحب ولا يحب عليه أحد وأكره ذلك كله لله تبارك وتعالى. And it is from the Sunnah that he does not love anything that someone does whilst that is something that is disliked by Allah, blessed and exalted. And one is to have Iman, that Iman in that Tawbah is compulsory on the slaves in that they make Tawbah to Allah, mighty and majestic, from major acts of disobedience and the minor as well. Right, so Tawbah is compulsory from minor and major sins, right? You may make Tawbah, there's something that must be done. So it's, oh no, Tawbah is not, it's not really, you know, I do it when I feel like it, or Allah loves uh, homosexuality now, or, you know, this is 2022, what are you talking about? We live in a different era now. No, Tawbah has to be made from all sins. And this is one of the outstanding reasons why we don't accept a lot of the movements that are done today, where someone will, do you accept uh, my cross-dressing, uh, trans pansexual son well no because I know that he's homosexual or pansexual transsexual polysexual trisexual I know that he's all those things but that's not his identity any more than any more than someone would take as their identity being an alcoholic they will do you accept me as an alcoholic well no but I accept that yeah you are an alcoholic but I don't accept your identity as an alcoholic because that's not an identity that's not the essence of who you are that's something that you do and there's a difference between what you do and who you are you are an alcoholic. Why? Because you're doing alcoholism. When you cease doing that, you cease being an alcoholic, right? You are a fornicator as long as you're fornicating. When you cease doing it, you don't stay a fornicator. Stop being a fornicator. It's not an identity. It's not who you are. And this is one of the main issues where we have clash with the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this day and this time. And whoever did not bear witness of one being in the paradise, who the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, bore witness of them, such a one is a carrier of innovation, a strainess, and is indeed one doubting in that which was said by the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. <laughs> من لزم السنة وسلم منه أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم مات كان مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وإن كان له تقصير في العمل. Imam Malik ibn Anas said, whoever took hold of the Sunnah and the companions are safe from his tongue, then he dies. He shall surely be with the prophets, the truthful ones, the martyrs, and the pious. And this is even if he had shortcomings in his deeds. Subhan Allah, because he belongs with those people. He belongs with the righteous people of the early generations. He's following that way. And that's why people have said of Imams like Muafud ibn Qudama or Abdul Qadir Jani that they are Baqiyatul Salaf. They're a remainder of the Salaf, meaning that they're following that way. They're following those people. So when you follow that way in those people, you belong to those people. You belong with them. Huh? And 
Bishr ibn al-Harith said, Islam is the Sunnah and the Sunnah is indeed Islam. وقال فضيل بن عياد إذا رأيت رجلا من أهل السنة فكأنما أرى رجلا من أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وإذا رأيت رجلا من أهل البدع فكأنما أرى رجلا من المنافقين. الفضيل بن عياد said when I see a man from Muslim orthodoxy it is as if I am seeing a man from the companions of the messenger of Allah peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and when I see a man from the people of innovation it is as if I am seeing a man from the munafiqun. وقال يونس بن عبيد العجب مما يدعو اليوم إلى السنة وعجمنه من من يجيب إلى السنة فيقبل وكان ابن عون ابن عون يقول عند الموت السنة السنة وإياكم البدعة حتى مات. يونس بن عبيد remark it is a surprise to see today people call to the Sunnah I am surprised by him in that he answers the Sunnah and accepts it. ابن عون used to say at the time at the time his death was near. The Sunnah, the Sunnah, you should be way of innovation, and he said this until he died. وقال أحمد بن حنبل ما ترجو من أصحابي رؤيا في المنام فقال قولوا لأبي عبد عبد الله عليك بالسنة فإن أول ما سألني الله سألني عن السنة وقال أبو العالية من مات على السنة مستورا فهو صديق ويقال الاعتصام بالسنة نجاه. أحمد بن حنبل said a man from my companions died and I saw him. While sleep, he said, "Tell Abu Abdullah Ahmad ibn Hanbal, you must follow the Sunnah. The first of what Allah asked me about was indeed the Sunnah." Abu Aliya once declared, "Whoever died upon the Sunnah as a cover, then he is truthful." And he also mentioned, "Taking hold of the Sunnah is salvation." وقال سبحان الثوري رحمه الله الإمام من أصقى بإذنه إلى الصحب بدعة خرج من عصمة الله ووكل إليها يعني البدعة. سفيان الثوري declared whoever inclined towards a career of innovation has exited from the protection of Allah and taken trust in that and he was referring to innovation. وقال داود أبي أبي هند أوحى الله تبارك وتعالى إلى موسى بن عمران عليه السلام لا تجالس أهل البدعة فإن جالستهم فحاك في صدرك شيء مما يقولون uh, Dawood ibn Hind once uttered, Allah bless and exalted is he revealed to Musa ibn Imran, do not sit with the people of innovation. Indeed, sitting with them put something in your heart of what they say, and this will cast you into the fire of Jahannam. وقال الفضيل بن عياب من جالس صاحب بدعة لم ي... لم يعطى الحكمة. Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad once said, whoever sat in gatherings with a carrier of innovation shall not be given any wisdom. وقال الفضيل بن عياد لا تجلس مع صاحب بدعة فإني أخاف أن تنزل عليك اللعنة. الفضيل بن إياد also said do not sit in a gathering with the carrier of innovation as I do fear that some curse will come down upon you. وقال الفضيل بن عياد من أحب من من أحب صاحب بدعة أحبط الله عمله وأخرج نور الإسلام من قلبه. It was also stated by Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad, whoever showed love and affection towards the carrier of innovation, Allah shall nullify his deeds and put out the light of Islam in his heart. وقال الفضيل بن إياد من جلس مع صاحب بدعة في في طريق ف ف ف فجز في طريق غيره. In another declaration, Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad remarked, whoever sat with the carrier of innovation on a path shall slip from another path besides that one. وقال الفضيل بن إياد من عظم صاحب بدعة فقد عانى لهدم الإسلام. ومن تب ومن ومن تبسم في وجهه مبتدع فقد استخف بما أنزل الله عز وجل على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أن زوج من زوج كريمة كريمة مبتدع فقد قطع رحم رح رحمه ومن دب ومن تب جنازة جنازة مبتدع لم يزل في صخ في صخة الله حتى يرجع. He also expounded on another occasion. Whoever respected or honored a carrier of innovation, then he has assisted in the destruction of Islam. Whoever smiled in the face of an innovator, then has taken very lightly what was sent down by Allah, mighty and majestic, mighty and majestic upon Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Whoever should marry a woman from an innovator, from an innovator, then he has cut the tie. Whoever should follow the janazah procession of an innovator shall always be in the wrath of Allah until he turns back from that way. وقال الفضيل بن عياد آكل مع يهودي ونصراني ولا آكل مع مبتدع وحب أن يكون بيني وبين صاحب بدعة حصن من حديد. At one point Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad spoke the following I would certainly eat with a Jew 
or Christian, but I would most certainly not eat with an innovator. In fact, I would love nothing better than that between myself and the carrier of innovation was a fortified castle of iron. وقال فعيد معيار إلى عالم الله عز عز وجل من الرجل أنه مغضب لصاحب بدعة غفر له وإن قل عمله ولم يقل صاحب السنة يملا صاحب البدعة إلا النفاق ومن ومن عار وجهه عن صاحب بدعة ملا الله قلبه إيمانا. And finally, Al Fudail ibn Iyad said, when Allah mighty and majestic knows of the man that he despise, despises the carry of innovation, he has forgiveness on him, even if his deeds are few. The carrier of sunnah is not comparable where he can be filled with anything from the carrier of innovation except nifaq. And whoever turned his face away from the carrier of innovation, Allah shall fill his entire heart with iman. ومن انتهر صاحب بدعة آمنه الله يوم الفزع الأكبر ومن أهان صاحب بدعة رفعه الله في الجنة مئة درجة فلا تكون صاحب بدعة في الله عبدا. And whoever turned away from the carrier of innovation, Allah shall safeguard such a one on the on the great fright, on the day of great fright. Whoever should destroy the carrier of innovation, Allah shall raise him in the paradise one hundred levels, while the carrier of innovations has nothing coming to him from Allah in any vein. أقول قبل هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم استغفر الله إن الله غفور رحيم حميم رحيم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا ورسولنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم أجمعين حميم رحيم Oh Allah, we ask that you forgive us in this month of Ramadan and that you bless our fasting, the zakat al fitr that we gave and the acts of worship we did for you and you alone. Oh Allah, we ask that you forgive us for the for the evil in our actions and the wickedness of the sins that we may have done in this month or outside of this month. Amen. Oh Allah, we ask that you forgive us and that you accept the tawbah from us that we made in this month and all the extra acts of worship that we did for your sake and your sake alone. Amen. Oh Allah, we ask that you make us among those who fear no one but you. Oh Allah, we ask that you, you we ask that you make us among those who are in your shade on the day when there is no shade but your shade. Amen. Oh Allah, we ask that you make us make us among those who hold firm to your sunnah and fear no one but you and you. Amen. Oh Allah, we ask that you make us among those who who believe in you and establish your faith and establish your sunnah and your religion in our homes and with our families. Amen. Oh Allah, we ask that you forgive those amongst us who came before us of the of the prophets the pious, the righteous ones, the companions, their students, and their students after them. Amen. Oh Allah, we ask that you have mercy upon the first three generations before us and that you bless them with exaltance and goodness. Amen. Oh Allah, we ask that the goodness that they did, that we don't waste it and that we carry the torch just as they carried it so that it would reach us. Amen. Oh Allah, our forebears in Islam that came into Islam and entered this religion and also are the reason why we're in this religion, we ask that you fill their accounts with good. Amen. Oh Allah, we ask that you do not make us among those who disgrace their names and disgrace the good that they did so that we might be here today. Amen. Oh Allah, we ask that you make us not to be a fitna for the unbelievers that they might not come into Islam but that you make us a proof against them on the day of resurrection that they do not enter this religion of truth Amen. oh Allah we ask that you make us among those who stand firm for your cause and your cause alone and that we fear no one neither the shaitan or those who are in service to him Amen. oh Allah we ask that you have mercy upon us in this time of great wickedness and evil a time in which may precede the time of the Dajjal and we ask that you make our hearts firm upon this truth our hearts and our and our tongues and our strength Amen. Oh Allah, we ask that you protect our families in this time of great tribulation and fitna and make us among those who fear no one but you and you alone. Amen. Oh Allah, we ask that you keep us protected from shirk, nifaq, and from also kufr in all of its forms, major and minor. And you make us among those who fear you and serve you and you alone. Amen. Oh Allah, we ask that you have mercy upon us and the scholars of righteousness in the land that are suffering wherever they may be. O oh Allah, we ask you have mercy upon us and upon the Mujahideen who are from the victorious group who fight throughout this earth for no sake of no sake but yours alone. O oh Allah, we ask that you have mercy upon us and the Mujahideen that are fighting in the earth and fighting for your sake and your sake alone. Amen. We ask that you protect them from the apostates, the fake rulers, the evil, the wickedness, the government scholars that may, may pass fetchwas against them and may try to protect us or protect them or protect the rulers that they're with so that we might not reach them with our duas and say good words of them. O oh Allah, we ask that you protect the Mujahideen from all types of evil wherever they may be. O oh Allah, we ask that you strengthen the Mujahideen and you give them victory wherever they may be. O oh Allah, we ask that you give the scholars the strength wherever they may be who protect the Mujahideen with their rulings and their fetwas and other affairs that they give on their behalf. O oh Allah, we ask that you protect our hearts from having any type of doubt or wickedness or fear towards the righteous scholars and Mujahideen or those who safeguard this religion. Amen. We ask that you remove the nifaq from our hearts or cowardice towards the unbelievers that are in our midst or those that live around us so that we might become like them or fear and hope that we're like them. We ask that you protect us from that, Father Allah. O oh Allah, we ask that you make us among those who stand firm in this month of Ramadan and thereafter and that you accept our fast and righteous deeds that we do.
We have reached the end of our text, the exposition of the Sunnah by Imam Abu Muhammad al Barbahari. I'd like to congratu- congratulate all the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that have reached this with us. And even those that are listening, inshallah, you've taken part in uh, this milestone with us. I think this is the first time this has been done uh, in English in this capacity or in this favor. Um, I want to ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us among those who stand firm, as, I, as we'd said in the dua of Khatim before, on his faith. There are many different tribulations that a believer may face. And we ask that he make us among those who stand firm in this time of tribulation. Now, are there any questions over what we covered in the text? Yes, any questions? As salamu alaykum. As-salamu alaykum. So it's uh, point 120, which is on page 65. Yes. Doctrine 120. Doctrine 120. Okay, bismillah. It's talking about, uh, you'll have leave, you just talking about the battle of Sifiri. Um, so do you know, like, obviously, well, you could, you could say that it was like a, Civil War uh, amongst the Sahaba, right? And um, that we are not partisan to take any sides with anyone. Um, what's, I mean, what's the be- best other? Because uh, because obviously there was there was a lot of issues between the two sets of groups. So do we take sides with either or all, or do we say who's right or wrong, but we still love them all, sort of thing? Do you know what I mean? What's what's the actual other in how we would go about doing? Uh, talking about this one because I'm sure that you know a lot of people will probably mention this as an attack on, on, on Muslims. You know? hmm. All right. All right, so the question is regarding the Sahaba and the battle that was between them and the Battle of Safin and the dispute between them. Um, this this question is uh, very famous and is a common uh, situation that comes up. Alhamdulillah. Our response to this is um, the same as when Imam Ahmed was asked about this. He said, both groups are groups of companions, and we love them both. And both of them are making ijtihad. Because the first group that was on Muawiyah's side were cousins of Muawiyah, and people that wanted his murder to be solved with the, with the soonest possibility and immediacy. And they were correct in that. This but is, uh, Uthman, this, this is, Yes, because Uthman is, is a relation of Muawiyah. So they were, in their ijtihad, they get only one reward because they were mistaken. Whereas Ali gets two rewards because he was correct for moving the Khilafah to Iraq, stabilizing the system first, reducing the situation between the companions, and launching an investigation into exactly who killed him because Uthman wasn't killed by one person, he was killed by an army of people. Mm-hmm. Right. So the Ishtihad is with Ali, although both of them receive reward for the Ishtihad. So this is our stance regarding them. Right. So, um... Yazid. Yazid was not a companion. Right. So Yazid Muawiyah, or known as Yazid the first, was not a companion. The was situation. He yes, he was the son of Muawiyah. Now Muawiyah, his point, Al Amir Muawiyah, known as the Katib or Khal Mu'minin, the uncle of the believers, we call him, he set down a principle because all four Khulafa were assassinated in one way, shape, or form. Muawiyah wanted to stop this, these type of situations from happening where the transition between one Khalifa to the other would be smoother. So what his methodology was, is he appointed an interim ruler, which in this case was Yazid Muawiyah. So after he dies, he'll be the interim. When the Khalifa is chosen, he'll step down. It'll be a smoother transition. Once he dies, Muawiyah said, I'm staying on. So now instead of going to this, this transition into the next ruler, Muawiyah, Yazid said, I'm actually staying on and ushered in a ch- type of tribulation in which more than 150 Sahaba were killed and other tribulations happened. Exactly. This led to the death of al Husayn ibn Ali as well. Is this where the, uh, the era of kingship started? Yes, this is the era where kingship starts. Okay. All, right. Exactly All right, any other questions? Question, brother? Question? No? Yes. I have another one. On, yeah. uh, it's uh, doctrine point number 136. 136. Okay, bismillah. Is that page 68, I believe? Yes. 
Uh, you make a mention of uh, making du'a uh, for the ruler, where you don't make du'a against the ruler. Uh, I mean, was it in the case uh, in the uprising with Syria, where there was two parties where, like, some were saying that you make du'a against the ruler and you stand up against the the oppressive, uh, you know, the oppressive <coughs> ruler, whilst other shayuk with it, they said no, don't do anything. Um, well, with, well, this this issue now comes down to regarding the Syrian situation and the rulers there. This comes down to a number of issues. The first we have to remember about this text is this text is talking about rulers who implement the shadow, who implement the revealed law. Those rulers are not them. Yeah, okay. So the conditions will be completely different regarding what the circumstances are. Uh, an example of this was I sent the son of Ismail Badran a question which was to do with uh, a mesala in fiqh on um, fasting and travel because there was an anomaly between two two kutub. And he answered the question. And I asked him, one of the things I asked him was about the sighting of the moon, the hilal, for uh, Syria and other nations. And I said, do you not wait for them? Or he said, no. He says, my father, Ismail Badran, one of the big imams of today, he says he doesn't. I said, well, why? He said, well, the reason for it is because that government is a secularist government. So we don't trust anything of what they say, any of their announcements, any secular government. We don't trust anything. We do our independent sightings. We don't take anything from any government. Where, whereas if we were talking about, say, the Abbasids, like even as tyrannical as Abu Jafar al-Mansur, he poisoned Imam Hanifa rahimahullah. If he didn't do it directly, he had someone do it. We would take his sighting. We say, "Yeah, we saw," because he wasn't wicked in that area. His issue was we're holding on to power. He never failed to implement the revealed law. These leaders that we're dealing with today are not only failing to implement the revealed law; they're actually setting down laws, setting down structures, setting down systems, getting involved with other treaties. There's an entire set of things that are happening with them, to where they are not the particular person in question. They belong to another category of rulers we have to deal with known as the Jababira or the Lulama, which is now they have a separate set of Ahkam, whether depending upon whether you make dua against them or not and things like this. But these are not talking about rulers that implement the Shatr and are oppressive in other ways. So that's a different discussion. So, so in a sense, the rulers are good because they're implementing the laws of Allah and Subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at the same time, is that the tyrannical to his people? Because they don't want anyone else to rule. Yeah, because we're, we're holding on to it, like the Bani Umayyah. No one, no one disputes No one disputes what Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. Abdul Malik ibn Marwan is the reason for the splendorous look of a Masjid Aqsa, the Dome of the Rock. But he said, anyone who's, who does not agree with my rule, make this sword agree with his head. And he was called Abu Muluk, the father of the kings, because all of his sons were the rulers after him of the Bani Umayyah. There's no one that wasn't from his children. He said, find everybody. That's not that's from the Bani Umayyah, that's not of our relation, and either stop him or stop him permanently where he goes back to Allah. So it's even a particular line that he wanted. So then when the Abbasids came to power, the Abbasids came in at Damascus and said, kill everyone from the Bani Umayyah. So Abdul Rahman al Dakhil fled to Andalus. And the Bani Umayyah and the Bani al Abbas, they didn't want to be seen as hangers on of the Bani Umayyah, so what do they do? They move the Khilafah to Iraq. And they said, well, we have to build a city more splendorous than Damascus, because the Bani Umayyah built Damascus. And if you look at the floor plan for the Jami Bani Umayyah and Al-Hamra, it's the same. Why? Because the same people built them. And the Bani Umayyah are really smart. If you look at how they built it, how they laid everything out, where the birds go in, but they don't soil the area, and they fly back out, that's all Bani Umayyah. That's their ma and that makes you understand the intellect they had. But the Bani Abbas said, we have to create a new situation. So they built Baghdad to try to counteract Constantinople, as well as what... Abdul Malik ibn Marwan built. Well, we're going to counteract him. So what do we say about the, the, the um, Umayyads? Because they're Ahl al-Bayt as well, aren't Yes, so, so but they're know? still tyrannical. Same thing with Al-Abbas. We, we know Al-Abbas, they're, they're, they're direct descendants of Ibn Ab Abbas, the uncle of Rasulullah. We know who the descendants they are. They're still tyrannical. They poisoned Imam Hanifa. They were killing companions. They ripped Imam Malik's arms out of the sockets. They opposed Imam Ahmed for Khulafa, opposed him. They had 72 sects grew up. Some of them were Mu'atezina. Some became Shiites. Yeah, they're Ahl Yeah, but they're still tyrannical. And that's the gist of it all. All right? Well, yeah. Any other questions? Yes, brother. Um, 
64113. When the tribulation surfaces, stay in your homes, flee from the tyranny of the tribulation, and beware of partisanship and sectarianism, and all of what results in the fighting between the Muslims for the earthly life is defined as tribulation. So you're asking, what is tribulation? Yes? Okay, do not fight in times of tribulation, times of evil desires inclining, sectarianism growing, inclination towards trends. Oh, trend. What is a trend? Yeah. Okay, T-R-E-N-D. That's a good question. A trend is a particular action that becomes popular in a time because a group of people are done it, have done it and said that it's good to do. That's a trend. Now, some trends are good. Like, for example, if someone started the trend of having the Miss Whack. That's a good trend. But then some trends can be wrong. So the first person that started the trend of drinking alcohol or the one that started the trend of murder, that's a trend, right? Those are bad trends. So trends are not all bad, they're not all good. It depends on who's doing it and it depends on the trend, right? Yes, well that's Brother Jamal, then I'll come to you. Yes. No, you just said a hand up. You were just affirming what the brother no, said. Just flexing. Okay. All right. So, well, brother, what's your question? Uh, I will ask so you after this, inshallah. It's uh, uh, point 156 on page 73. Doctrine 156. Okay. Bismillah. 156. Yes. It's talking about dealing with, uh, with, with, with deviants. So, like, you know, if, if deviants come up to you, um, then it's best to stay silent, sort of thing, no? So obviously these are people of um, you know sex like the the, the wild or you know, all those. But you know like if you have a person who is upon the haq mm -hmm. in the haq world, the in the, the, the sphere of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, okay. but he himself is a deviant <laughs> because of how he is and who he is, um, and he's in a position of authority, like an Imam or a Mawlana, this type of stuff. How would you then act? Because surely in those type of situations, if he's doing the vulm and giving all these bogus type of fatwas and so and so forth to people, you're not going to just sit there silently and take it all because he's just going to continue. Okay. Okay. All right. So the question is dealing with people that are from Ahlul Sunnah, but they commit oppression and also spread wrong actions and other affairs. How to deal with them because there's times where you can't be silent. Okay, alhamdulillah, Well, this answer is of two types. When dealing with the people of innovation, when it states, do not seek any power from yourself with which to refute the people of innovation. What that means is you don't use yourself as a refutation or argument because the scholars have already said something. There's ayat and a hadith. So if someone says, well, I, I say that uh, Tawheed is of three and that most of the ummah is upon major shirk. No. Read the divine lightning, the divine texts. Here are the proofs for this. Here are the proofs for that. Right. So that's perfectly fine. But you wouldn't say, "Well, I have answers. I will prepare a. I will prepare my notes for debate with you for tomorrow." No, no, no. This has already been covered. It's already been dealt with. Right. So that's one area of discussion. When you deal with people from Ahl Sunnah that fall into innovation, now you have to deal with the next issue. You have to say, "Will they take correction from you?" If they won't because they're older or more senior most in rank, now you have to find people that are senior most of them in rank or the same caliber of them to rebuke them. If they are of the same rank as you and you can discuss with them, but you may be worried that because their, their tongue is more seasoned than yours in certain matters where their, their, their tongue is sharper and you feel that you may stumble over your words, then merely presenting them with the texts of Ahl Sunnah is enough. Say, so listen, what you're doing is wrong or what have you, and you present them with the texts, that is enough, right? If it's a circumstance where you're on a platform, let's say, let's say you're sharing a platform, you don't know that they have this understanding. And so you're sitting on the platform, you're discussing myself, let's say it's myself, Brother Abdullah, Brother Qasim, Brother Brother, we're sitting on a platform, and, uh, Sheikh X at the end of it says, and anyway, what does it matter? Because Nabi and Isa Islam is dead and he's not coming back anyway. Now, in that circumstance, you can't be silent at that point. That's crazy. He's denied some fundamental doctrinal stuff. 
So you don't say, well, inshallah, we'll step to the side. No, 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 no. We'll put him to the side. Right now, we have to address what he said. We grab the mic. Listen, uh, I need to affirm some of, I need to just address some of what was said. We are not in agreement regarding this. And then you state your case and what have you. The issue with when some people go astray from Ahl Sunnah, the issue in that that sometimes happens is if they're in a rank of position, sometimes they insulate themselves, which is harder to deal with them. Because when they insulate themselves, how do you get to them? Right. So I have this with there's one or two people who have things that they've said or doubtful matters that are becoming more and more cacophonous by the day. Yeah. And I go to these people privately and say, this has got to stop or calm down. Sometimes they might take it on board. A lot of times they don't. But I've discharged my obligation. That's the most you can do in a circumstance like that if you're seen as their junior. Because if there's no one that they see as their superior or their equal, and you're viewed as their junior, especially if it's a racial thing, then there's not a lot that you can really do other than I've discharged my obligation to the best of my, of my ability, and now I'm not accountable. It's the same thing with reproving, reproving or uh, dealing with your parents. Your parents might say, what are you talking about? I breast, if your mom says, I breastfed you. Well, you don't, you can't say anything to me. I breastfed you. I remember you when you had no hair. You can't say anything to me. So, okay, well, that's the end of the discussion now, even if what you're saying is true. So now you have to find someone of similar caliber or rank that they trust in. Well, um I don't really want to give names, but like an example in Birmingham, like a, a certain mufti that we, 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 all, we all know well, okay. uh, he's spreading his own version of Islam and whatnot. Okay. Um, and then you have people that refute him through um, like discussions or debates, mm -hmm. which is not, it's not the right way to go about doing that, is mm -hmm. that? Because obviously I think early on you mentioned in the box that like, you should be staying away from debates and mm -hmm. like, what, you know, debates within the religion because, mm -hmm. you know, these are like indications of the sign of the people of innovation. Mm. So to tackle that particular problem in Birmingham, I mean, what's the best method? The, be the, best, the best method when dealing with people that are in different cities or people that are in a rank is what you do is you teach the affirmational aspects of the religion. I'll give you an example. If someone is teaching, let's say, there is no punishment of the grave to come. Someone starts teaching, there's no punishment of the grave. What are you talking about? There's no punishment of the grave. Once you're in your grave, you're annihilated. You become flecks of dust, and the rest is history, and you get reincorporated into the ooze, the cosmic ooze. Huh? Someone teaches that. It's not enough just to address that issue, because that's just one thing. What you have to do is to come and have, let's say, a series of dudus. Uh, this year, we're going to be covering a text. We're covering al and the Nesafi. And you're covering the affirmational aspects of the creed. And within there, punishment of the grave will come up. And that's when you have a big presentation about that, everything else. What that is, is that's an offensive strategy. Ahlul Sunnah should never be involved in defensive strategies. Our strategy should always be offensive. So instead of talking about this one area that you mentioned, no, no, no. We're going to talk about the whole area of our doctrine. If you deny fiqh, and imams of fiqh, we're not going to fight with you about the imams. We're going to talk about the history of the fiqh and how they, the imams, how it reached us, how Islam reached us, and we'll cover it. Because that's more powerful than just addressing your one part. Because your one part, okay, that's gone. But then what's going to happen? You're going to bring up something else. Because the nature of shaitan is he leaves from one door and he comes to another door. So what do you do? Instead of doing that, you deal with the whole topic. So when someone says, let's say we did a whole video, it was a three-hour video. We made a day of it about the history of fiqh and imams, which we did. We did the four imams lecture, a whole thing. Someone says, I disagree with that. I don't think that's true because blankety blank. You know what we do with that video? We take an excerpt out of it and we post it. We can make, what do they call them, shorts? We make shorts of that stuff now. You got the entire three and a half hour lecture. Now we start making shorts. So we address it one time in detail. So then we don't have to address it again. Signs at the end of time. I did, what, 26 uh, lectures? I went through, okay, I don't have to address it again. If, pe if brothers want to, I'm telling you, you can start making shorts. If any slave of a law has, a, has an account that's designed for taking shorts, start vroom, 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 because it deals with all that stuff. The Dajjal, blank, 30-second little spot, 60-second spot, two-minute spot, whatever the case may be. 
It's been put there, big, long play. If brothers decide to make shorts of it or smaller excerpts, that's fine too. The, the, uh, the, the presentation that I did on the uh, Divine Lightning, that's 17 classes. Someone's gone and made shorts of those. That's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine, right? So what you do is you address the entire issue. And then within that issue, you address that. So in the future, if that person, well, so-and-so brought this, yeah, we already covered that. We already dealt with that. Mm -hmm. So the way that people are going about it by taking the one person that that person has said and then making a three and a half hour lecture about that one point. Well, subhanAllah, you've just created a situation where you're gonna be doing this for the next 15 years rather than dealing with it that one time. And what you also have to understand very briefly in, in closing this, is you have to look at the levels of people that you're dealing with. This individual that you're talking about doesn't belong to the post of which he claims. Because the very method, which is another reason why uh, fiqh and imams are important. When someone claims allegiance to something, we can go back to the imams of that particular school and say, wait a minute, do they stand by that statement at all? Well, no, they don't. So once we find that, we're like, well, he's an outlier. Yeah. right? Or if someone claims the post of mufti, Someone claims the post of mufti. Mufti means you expound and explain and tell people about stuff that's already agreed upon or what's different and what have you. Muftis don't speak on new stuff. So why is he talking about new stuff? It's not a mufti. Is he mufti trying to act like a faqir? Is it? No, no. So if people don't know what their post is, a mufti shouldn't be telling you anything about what's going to happen or what's happening now. Muftis tell you about stuff that's already agreed upon. So let's say I was a mufti. You come to me, you ask me about Rafa Yadain and Salah. I said, there's two issues about this. Some say it's abrogated, some say that it's not, blah, blah, blah. These are the schools and what they say. Now, if you ask me something new, but Abu Jafar, there's some people who now live under the ocean or near the ocean's floor because they've been able to navigate through the pressure of the ocean and people have uh, houses down there, everything else. Would that be an option for combining and shortening Salah? Because that's more than 48 miles, maybe. Some in certain instances. Or would it be considered as traveling more than 48 miles based upon those conditions? As a mufti, you say, I'll get back to you tomorrow. Why? Because I'm going to go to a faqih who deals with those areas. Because fuqaha deal with current and further stuff in time. I can't give you an answer. I say, well, listen, I've spoke to the fuqaha about this. Oh, okay. Well, so I don't know. Right? But I can't, as a mufti, give you an answer about something. Because my job as mufti is to tell you stuff that's already happened. Right? So it's also understanding what a mufti is. I think some people are using this title mufti like engineer. Right. But this should not be the case. <laughs> Engineer or um, MBS, BSC, which really is MBS in the end. But, and you know what I, which I mean that. But the fact of the matter is, is all of that stuff, people have to look at the realities of these things. Many of these people could be, could be taken care of in one presentation rather than 11 videos. Why do we got to have 11 videos about the permissibility of the molded? We know that. Get one. That's enough now. Don't talk about it again. All right? So, we'll close from there, inshallah. And I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us. We're now going to have the presentation of the Sama'a documents, inshallah. So I say, Subhanak Allahumma bihamdika wa shahadu wa la yudahi da anta astaghfiruka wa yitubu yinayk innahu wa kurrahim wa hamil rahimi wa la yudahi illallah. Wassalamu alaikum.